Uh, hello guys, uh, hopefully you're enjoying this beautiful day and let's talk today about um, FastAPI and Pydantic. I'll show you how you can define uh, input and output types for your API. And more than that, with Pydantic you can define some sort of validation uh, rules as well, where you could, um, uh, for example, define default values for uh, fields or you could define uh, logic such as a field is required or not. And this greatly helps to um, uh, avoid certain errors when uh, communicating with API from the outside. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start and let's see how it works. Okay, and I should mention that um, all the source code that I'm explaining is based on our open source product that we are actively developing called Skipper, uh, workflow for machine learning applications. And uh, uh, whatever I learn or build uh, during the week, I'll try to share with you and so, so that I learn something and you would learn something from me. So this motivates me to uh, record and post uh, this kind of blogs. Uh, so hopefully you would get out of this information something useful for you as well. So let's uh, jump to the uh, source code and uh, why I decided to, to talk about Pydantic today. Uh, let's uh, see step by step. So first of all, uh, on the screen you see um, an endpoint defined with fast API called execute workflow task. And this endpoint um, defines uh, wor workflow task result, uh, response model, and also it defines input um, value, which uh, belongs to type, type workflow task data. Okay. And uh, instead of um, listing all the attributes uh, here when defining endpoint, uh, we could just uh, refer to a type and um, later when endpoint would be running, uh, validation would happen automatically. When you would try to submit data to this API endpoint, it will be validated against the type and if some of the fields will be missing, you will get the error, for example. And um, these types are being defined um, in a um, separate um, script called models over here. And let's look, uh, look, let's look into the uh, workflow task data uh, type. This type is being used in this endpoint and also one more endpoint is using it, start, start workflow task. This endpoint is using it uh, as well, the same, the same type. This means we can reuse types across different endpoints. We don't need to build a separate type for each endpoint, and this um, also great. So let's see how the type is defined. So this is the class uh, workflow task data, which defines the type. And there are four attributes, task type, uh, payload, uh, data, and description. Right. So uh, task type is a complex type which is defined uh, over here in another class and uh, this type um, uh, defines three static values, training, inference and serving. This means the value for this field can be, uh, can be uh, just uh, training, inference and serving. If there will be any other value, you will get validation error from Pydantic on, on a runtime. Okay, second attribute is uh, string type payload, description is uh, also um, string type and description is optional. So if um, description would not be set or this attribute would be completely removed from the uh, payload, that's fine, there will be no error. There is another optional attribute called data, but this attribute is more complex because it's, uh, it's another um, uh, sort of JSON structure. So it's another uh, array of data inside the parent array. So it's a second level array. And it's also optional. And here we're using uh, create model function from uh, Pydantic. And with create model, we can define a shape or, or schema for, uh, for, for the structure. So uh, we list all the attributes that will be um, provided to, uh, to this uh, element. And we can define types uh, for, for all of the attributes and also this option to define default uh, default value and if we like for this else start attribute and if we define a default value the attribute becomes um, not required this means if um, will if user would not set it in in request uh, would not include this value then 
um, uh, this default value will be assigned automatically behind the scenes, explicitly, basically. And uh, for other attributes, since they are required, if uh, some of them would not be included in the re into the request, then the validation error will be returned again. Yeah, and if um, uh, look, and and we have two endpoints. So for the execute workflow task, we expect uh, uh, this endpoint expects uh, data um, uh, attribute uh, structure to be set. But for example, uh, another endpoint start workflow task, it doesn't need um, data attributes, but still we could use the same type uh, because uh, data is optional. And if you don't need it, we just don't set it in the, uh, into the request uh, parameters, parameters and it's fine, it works well. So that uh, gives uh, great flexibility. So let's see how this works. Let's, uh, first of all, let's start um, Actually, let's go to uh, source code and I'll explain you uh, how you could start uh, the application. So first of all, you would need to start engine. And uh, if you don't have RabbitMQ installed, then you can install it from uh, Docker Compose file. Uh, below over here, you would see instructions how to run this Docker Compose. It will set up RabbitMQ for services communication. And first we need to start uh, fast API endpoint. This is the command. Go over here and start it. It started, and next we need to start uh, serving service because uh, from the endpoint that I'll show you, uh, sh will be showing to you, the uh, communication is executed uh, through the RabbitMQ to the serving service. And let's see, this uh, we have a services and this. Uh, serving service and this is the how we started just uh, start main script okay service is started so we can return back to the main engine and now we need to open a fast api endpoint uh, to be able to test it so let's go back to engine and over here we have a reference to uh, fast API uh, Swagger UI on localhost. Okay, so this is our endpoint uh, which executes workflow task. Okay, let's make the uh, window a bit smaller. Let's open it and we see that um, in request body uh, the structure of um, the input data is automatically described based on a pedantic uh, type that we defined in the application. And you see all the attributes that are required, they're listed with uh, value zero because there was no default value set. Else that attribute uh, is assigned with default value. And now we can test how it works. So for example, over here we need to provide um, task type serving because we want to um, uh, communicate with a serving service for through, through RabbitMQ. Uh, payload is not being used uh, in in this um, example, but just put let's, let's put one two three four five description. Uh, we can say this is a sample task, and let's let's call it. Okay, we got success um, response as expected, and then we can uh, try and play a bit. For example, what if I'll remove, um, uh, for example, this attribute, which is required. If I execute, then this error being returned because uh, value is required and we see this validation uh, message is being uh, displayed. Okay, but what if we don't need the data section at all? So let's uh, remove it and this is, should be a valid request because um, data, data group is optional. So if we execute now, it's executed and in the result set is being, in, in result uh, log we see uh, uh, JSON structure is being printed and data is assigned now because it's not set. Okay, and now let's uh, bring it back the structure uh, again. Let me copy paste. Let's execute, it works and 
let's remove uh, value which is uh, not required and it comes with um, default value. So now this value is being removed and we execute and it's being printed uh, because uh, it's default. So it's explicitly set. And now if um, I bring it back and assign value to like three, execute and now since we uh, explicitly set the value then this value is being uh, sent to the server as expected okay so this is how it works and few uh, one more thing to mention is uh, when we are when endpoint is being executed we get uh, this um, input uh, as a variable of type that we defined with pydantic and uh, yeah by default this comes uh, let, let, let's print it out it comes as a type and um, there is a trick how to uh, how to how to translate this uh, data to be uh, to be able to use it in the application let's uh, save it and if we execute we see that uh, originally a data comes as a type and uh, it would be a bit. Um, we could uh, access this um, uh, data from workload as data dot, um, and then we then we would need to uh, provide uh, element name and so on. Uh, but it's more convenient uh, to convert uh, input data to JSON using dot JSON, and and then uh, if we go back to to the application, test it, uh, and then uh, it's being. The input variable uh, value is being uh, serialized to to a string uh, with JSON format, and then it's easier to consume this data in uh, in another functions. Uh, so you could use instead of uh, working with a type, you could use it. You could work like with a JSON string. Okay, so um, hopefully this um, introduction and explanation how to work with fast API pydantic and how to uh, define uh, input types, output types uh, with pydantic types um, uh, is useful and hopefully you would apply it in your uh, daily work the same as uh, I apply and uh, stay, stay tuned um, there will be more updates coming for Skipper and uh, my goal to make this uh, ML workflow uh, useful and simple uh, and usable for uh, for anyone uh, thank you